welcome to the 11th session of art and science of eating in the last session i was discussing about this ojas tejas and prana today i will go in a little more detail you can uh, see on the slide the meaning of ojas is nutrition as an outcome of digestion and the meaning of tejas is radiation as an outcome of digestion and the meaning of prana is energy as an outcome of digestion so you should ensure that whatever food you eat it must have enough ojas uh very sad to say that in the present lifestyle most of the food which the modern people consume are not having enough ojas for example the fried foods the bakery foods any type of packaged foods they do not have much of ojas uh, the way to check whether a food article is having ojas or not is that if you keep a food today let us say by tomorrow the food should become stale the food should decay that means that the food is organic which means if the food is continuously undergoing a change within itself a transformation within itself then that has got ojas all the god made fruits they have enough ojas you keep a banana today unripe banana tomorrow it will become ripe day after tomorrow it will start decaying which means that the banana has got enough ojas within it let us say you keep a biscuit let us say a biscuit you buy any packed biscuit keep the biscuit today watch it after 15 days even after 15 days if that biscuit remains the same which means it has lost its organic content whatever claims the products manufacturers may tell that is all part of marketing the food should have ojas means only if it is having ojas it will be easily digestible so the first check that any food is having ojas is that food should not last longer if the food can last longer that means it is not having ojas it has been synthesized it has been handled in an industrial way where its nutrients are lost or the organic content is lost this is the first check that's why i had told very sad to say that in the modern lifestyle how much of the food which we consume is having ojas so if it is having enough ojas the nutrition which is already there that nutrition will be an outcome of digestion if the food is not having ojas simply garbage in and garbage out it will go into the mouth it will go into the stomach it will go into the intestine it will go out if it is not having any nutrition so as much as possible as possible uh, reduce the content of packaged foods processed foods this suggestion i have been giving you from the beginning but this this fact the rishis of ayurveda understood thousands of years back that the food as it is available in nature is having lot of ojas within it now the same food which is having enough ojas when it goes into the system it will radiate when it radiates the nutrients are absorbed into the blood and the body radiates a certain glow the body will have certain brightness then that is called tejas now apart from the brightness if the same ojas which was there in the body after getting converted into brightness or tejas the residual storage of energy that itself is called as prana so that prana is the energy as an outcome of digestion प्राणस्यदम वशेत सर्व तृदिवे यतिष्ठित मत पुत्र रक्षस्वा श्रेष्च प्रज्ञा च विदेहन दिस् इज द सेंटेन्स टोल्ड इन प्रश्नोपनिषत् दट मीन द ऋषि अंडर्स्टुड आर् द ऋषि अंडर्स्टुड द प्राण आर् द बेजि लाइफ फोर्स द वन विच ईज कीपिंग द बॉडी अलय द फुड शुड हेव दट मच आफ सप्लीमेंट आफ प्राण अदरवैज इट ईज नाट अ फुड now why the ojas decreases in the body if it is poor digestion let us say the stomach does not secrete enough hydrochloric acid then there is no digestive fire that is called agnimandya 
if there is digestive fire lack of digestive fire then all the food that you consume it will not be converted into tejas at all then synthesized food i had already told about all that lack of rest if you have lack of rest then your body's priority will be not to digest your food your body's priority will be somehow to give you more rest until you take rest the body will body has its own mechanism of prioritization of the tasks just like in the software language or in the computer science language uh, when we talk about microprocessors or microcontrollers there are some masked interrupts there are some unmasked interrupts and there are some prioritized interrupts and the microprocessor will handle these interrupts one by one based on the priorities in a similar fashion even the body has these priorities all the present technologies nothing but the human being replicated his own system nothing else whatever technology human beings have found out all those technologies are already there inside the body that they are yet to understand so the body has its own mechanism of prioritizing things let us say the body is having lack of rest now rest is more important than digestion at that time the body will prioritize for rest and it will reduce the activity of its digestion if it is reduces the activity of the digestion now even if the food is having ojas it will not be useful and bad habits i have already told enough about all those bad habits because of all those bad habits the food will not be digested properly and if it is irregular diet irregular diet means there is no system in the consumption of the food in that way even the body will lose its uh, synchronization or the body will lose its plan if at all the food consumption is planned or systematic even the body will adapt in its own way to this particular method if the uh, eating habits are irregular then gradually all other systems in the body will also become in a haphazard fashion then also even if the food is having enough ojas it will not be useful now what is the reason for lack of tejas excessive talking whenever we excessively talk vocal cord consumes lot of energy brain consumes lot of energy medically they say that one hour of public talking is equal to four hours of physical work in one hour of public talking we keep on exhaling at that time we don't inhale much when we don't inhale much it is as good as we are expelling that much of energy which is equal to four hours of physical work especially me and my colleagues who are in the teaching field we know the pains of this energy now you may ask me sir you have been excessively talking you started from 8th june you are going on every day one and a half hour but i told you i am not talking to a uh, larger crowd i am only sitting in my bedroom and laptop in front of me and i am talking only to you people and my volume is not as large as it has to reach to many people but a classroom teaching imagine a classroom teaching in a school or in a college where there is no sound system imagine sound system is actually not practical for a crowd of around 60 to 80 students in a small classroom but for addressing those students in spite of the class noise we have to keep on raising our voice and that is where one hour of talking is equal to four hours of physical work that is the loss of tejas now how do we supplement teachers have to have completely nutritious food for supplying this much of energy into the system otherwise i see many of my colleagues if at all they have 3 hours of lecture per day at the end of the day they will be exhausted and they sometimes wonder what is the energy of arvind sir what is the secret of arvind sir now they all know the secret of arvind sir's energy what i have been telling from past several sessions even i also excessively talk whole week i keep talking whole week even on sundays also i keep talking but i take care that when i lose that much of energy because of my talking i supply the same amount of nutrition into my body i take care that way that is the same thing which 
you also are advised to follow. So excessive talking, tejas will be decreased. Excessive work, stressful work. I have told enough about what is called a stress. Sustained torture and repeated exposure to strain of the self. That is stress. Due to the stress also, uh, tejas in the body will be reduced. And if there are negative emotions, always thinking of negative things. Today I had taken a session on yoga at RRIT and uh, I had mentioned that an adult brain it generates 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day and out of those thoughts, nearly 90% of the thoughts are repetitive in nature and majority of them are negative thoughts in nature. Many times fear or anxiety, pain, they keep on remembering. Now, when they keep on remembering such things, more of negative emotions, there will be lack of tejas. Now, why prana will be reduced? Again, because of the lack of ojas, lack of tejas. If the ojas is decreased and if the tejas is decreased, because of all these things, even the prana will be reduced. Now, how, what are the methods to increase ojas? When you eat, you have to eat slowly. When you eat slowly, this poor digestion will be taken care. If you eat slowly, you mash your food in the mouth slowly, then gradually you will reduce the effort of the stomach on the digestion of the food. So naturally, you are helping the stomach to digest the food in a better way. Then gap between meals. Should not keep eating meals heavily. If at all you had a heavy meal, you will have to give a chance for the stomach to digest all that food before you take another food. That way, every one hour keep on eating something is going to reduce the OGS again. Every one hour you keep on eating something, you are not allowing the stomach to properly digest the previously eaten food also. You simply keep on loading. Even if it is a small quantity also, if you keep on loading continuously every one hour once, then also... Uh, you are going to reduce the ojas. So there must be a gap between the meals. Regarding balanced diet, I have already told about 50 to 30 to 20 ratio. I have spoken about macronutrients and micronutrients. Now how to increase stages? Positive thinking and meditation. These have been my practices to increase my stages. If at all you have all those negative emotions, you will have to somehow forego. Somehow you have to believe in the self who is within you. Somehow you have to start believing fully on God. That way only you will start developing positive thinking. Otherwise, everywhere it is the negativity which is spreading. As much as possible, fish has to be in contact with the water only. Fish should not be too much worried about the contact with the other fishes. If at all there are fishes who are ignorant of the water, somehow this fish has to become knowledgeable about water because it is the water which is supporting the fish. That is the only way to increase positive thinking and meditation. The whole, whole and sole purpose of meditation is to realize the self only. Abheta darshanam, jnanam, dhyanam, nirvishayam, manaha. That is told in Maitreya Upanishad. So meditation has to help you in realizing your own self. That way you are going to increase the tejas. Now if at all you have to increase the prana, you will have to go for pranayama in yoga. Or here I call it as breathing exercises. Strictly speaking, pranayama is not a breathing exercise. Through breathing, you are increasing the prana that way. So pranayama is much more subtle. It is having a much deeper meaning than a breathing exercise. But for the sake of simplicity, here I have put it as breathing exercises. Later on, I have to think of slightly modifying it for a better word. If at all any of you want to get into the yogic practices, you can search for Shreyas Center for Yoga in YouTube. That particular uh, Shreyas Center for Yoga in YouTube with the Lord Dattatreya's picture. Search for that. There we have uploaded all the videos and audios which we had made a few years before. I have some very sincere students who have been volunteering for this work and my one particular student called Vijay Kant, he has uh, uploaded all this into YouTube. Me and himself, we are in continuous 
uh, contact for this particular activity and even this art and science of eating uh, videos also we will be uploading into youtube channel there you can subscribe to the channel there are already 26 videos 20 audios with all uh, asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana practices six sets each then you have six videos for yogasana practices all in Kannada. I should be highly grateful to Dr. Swami Gitananda Giri's lineage where I have learnt all these great practices from my Guru Sri Narsim Murthy. And uh, later on I have added many other practices which I learnt from other sources also. It is all in Kannada. So the Kannada speaking people can make use of it. So that way through breathing exercises, through pranayama, prana in the body can be increased. Now, there are some people who will not be able to follow all these practices as such or follow all those advices. Yogic practices are for people who are independently going to take care of their own body. Whereas Ayurveda and other therapies are for people who are unable to take care of their body, body in that way. So, there is therapy. Therapy is basically for somebody who do not take care of themselves in this way. Whatever is the method to increase if they do not follow, follow at least they can go for this therapy. Therapy to increase the OJCs in the morning, soaked almonds plus cow's milk plus cardamom. Keep the almonds soaked in the previous night itself. Then the soaked almonds, crush some cardamom and along with that consume cow's milk. This is having enough nutrition there through which ojas in the body will increase. So for increasing tejas in the body before meals, take this trikatu and honey. Trikatu and honey is going to help in the better digestion of the food as such. So tejas is going to increase. If at all prana has to be increased, someone else has to supply prana. That is called pranic healing. Now through pranayama, you can increase the prana in your body. But if at all you are unable to perform pranayama, somebody else who is having enough prana, they should clear your chakras, they should energize your pranamaya kosha, that is called pranic healing. I will be happy if some of you learn this great art of pranic healing. It will be worth it. It is one of the very subtle arts which is highly useful to human beings. If you learn pranic healing, only then you will understand more about prana. Because prana cannot be sensed as such so easily by the normal people. Coming to the body mass index. You can see this chart. This is height in feet and inches. This is weight in pounds. Upper side it is weight in kilograms. Weight in stones means it is weight in pounds. This is height in meters or this is height in feet and inches. Now let us say I am around 5 feet 6 inch. If it is, if I am 5 feet 6 inch. Now my weight here, this OK, yellow region. The weight here is, should be between 9 pounds to around 11 pounds. Means between... 5.6 you can go up there it is between 60 kgs and between 70 kgs it will be my optimum weight for my height if at all i am less than that then that is called underweight that means if i am underweight i may not have enough physical strength also if i am so too much underweight if a wind blows i may simply get carried away by the wind also so for my height i must have at least 60 kg to 70 kg weight i should balance that within and i have been balancing it since many years my weight right now is around 67 kg during lockdown i had increased to around 69 kg to 70 kg but i put on some dietary control on myself and i reduced the intake i increased my yogic exercises and I have been trying to maintain this weight only. If at all, if it is more than that, then it is called overweight. And I have already told you the effects of overweight. 
when you become overweight that much of weight is in the torso only above your hip region so your hip bones hip bone is the largest bone in the body hip bone along with the muscles in the hips they should uh, handle that much of weight which is at the top now if the load is more than at the top no, gradually you will have the pain in the hip region you will have the pain in the knees and it will gradually go on the only solution to avoid all these things in the old age to avoid all these pains in the old age is to reduce the weight that is the only way and the only safe way to reduce the weight is to work more and eat less practice yogasanas more or practice aerobic exercises more or practice any such safe exercises more and uh, consume less amount of food that is the only safe way don't go for any other weight reduction mechanisms it will affect your body in different ways so now i have told about underweight i have told about okay weight i have told about overweight let us say for my height 5.6 let us say cross the weight of 80 i should be within 60 to 70 now 70 to 80 itself is overweight if i cross 80 then i am declared as obese until 110 kg it is called obesity obesity means there will be more and more fat accumulated in the body more fat around the stomach more fat around the hips more fat in the thighs more fat in the arms everywhere fat 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 and if there is more and more fat it is called obesity now these people who are obese somehow they have to reduce the weight otherwise they will have more and more of joint related issues their own weight they will not be able to manage they will not be able to properly walk with an optimum speed also they will not be able to run also they will not be able to climb the stairs also everywhere they will have the handicapment so obesity is basically a modern days disease now still threatening is clinically obese if at all let us say from from 80 kg to around 110 kg that is called obesity i am telling about this five five feet six inches example if at all for my height if at all i cross this 110 kg then i am called as clinically obese clinically obese means even in spite of all the therapies or exercises also that weight cannot be reduced they will have to cut some portion of the uh, uh, body fats by means of surgery that is what they do ultimately you would have heard of the guinness records of the fattest people or the people with heavy weight but have you heard about their lifestyles they have been lying on bed for years together that is called clinical obesity where even in the normal way also the weight cannot be reduced they have to go for a surgical operations for the reduction of weight that will be much more painful now people have to be careful this way always for your height whether your weight matches this way you will have to keep on managing otherwise in the old age you will have more pain the difference between these two people is what they eat the left side and the right side left side you can see eats mostly refined food 45 percent of calories from fat 42 teaspoons of sugar intake daily it's a powerful appetite stimulant four times more heart attacks four times more sugar diabetes more arthritis more sleep disorders more depression more cancer more doctor visits more allergies requires 100 miles of new blood vessels per pound of fat more foot problems regarding this 100 miles i'll tell you later more foot problems more gout shorter life expectancy now look about the person who is at the right side eats fruits vegetables whole grains and legumes more self-acceptance fewer accidents longer average lifespan less heartburn higher energy level increased virility in men you would have observed whenever uh, uh, people who eat uh, heavy masala heavy food there will be more heat in their body and that is when they will have more and more of anger there are some food materials which will induce anger in you let us say you already have a gas accumulated in the stomach at that time if somebody irritates you you will become more angry at that time which means your body's health is 
not proper at that time even a small incident will cause you more anger i'll tell you a small example uh, which i personally saw when i was coming back from college uh, i was uh, i had crossed the fraser town and i was near bambu bazar in the bambu bazar there is a small traffic signal in front of that uh, uh, petrol pump so it was heavy heat there it was summer uh, we were all wearing helmets also and in front of me there was a uh, heavily fat person and adjacent to him there was an auto rickshaw and the auto rickshaw had stood in a slant angle and that other fat person was adjacent to auto rickshaw i was behind that auto rickshaw now there was a signal this person who is in front of me that fat person who is in the scooter he casually told to the auto driver can you not stand straight so that we will all stand aligned there was enough heat maybe inside the auto rickshaw also there was enough heat that particular driver used some foul language against this particular person when he used the foul language this person became angry on that particular person he also used the foul language and the foul language exchange went on for about 1 minute the traffic police was watching we were all watching it was still a red signal we were not moving and when they kept on using foul language suddenly the person on the scooter became so angry he started punching the auto driver and auto driver pulled this person's shirt within a few seconds blood was oozing out of both the faces both were actually physically heavily fighting with each other and there was blood coming out of both the faces and immediately the other people around they simply pushed the auto driver physically away this incident when i watched i thought what made them angry it was only a matter of few minutes and after that green signal would have come we would have gone what made them angry foul language and foul language why he used maybe it is his habit to use foul language or at that time the heat which is there already in the auto rickshaw or within his body because of the summer season it made them angry now think about if they keep on consuming such food also do they have any patience now here it is more self acceptance fewer accidents why fewer accidents people will have more patience people who keep on eating such foods which have no ojas or less ojas they are subjected to temper and anger and more ego more and more of more and more of animalistic behavior less and less of human behavior so my friends you can eat your way to a healthier life i'll come to today's topic let me take a 1 minute break for drinking water okay let me come to the hot topic of cholesterol you can see this picture cholesterol is produced by the liver and we consume it from meat and dairy products this is the liver the biggest muscle in the body and i have already told you in detail about the function of the liver now either liver will release cholesterol or this food itself will have cholesterol even the bread and even the milk even the meat even the eggs actually this meat and eggs are out of our syllabus completely the bread and milk even they have cholesterol even some fruit pieces also fruit pieces also will have cholesterol or cheese paneer they all will have cholesterol so look at this molecule this is a cholesterol molecule which is resembling an oil drop now this cholesterol is a complex molecule complex in the sense uh, it is a chain of carbohydrate molecules basically fat molecules fat is basically a compound of carbohydrates further so you can look at this cholesterol looks like an oil molecule oil molecule now if it is digested or now it is going through the intestinal wall you can see this is the intestinal wall 
and through which cholesterol is passing. If this is absorbed into the blood, it will go to the blood. If at all it is burnt out due to your physical activity, if it is burnt out, you are safe. If it is not burnt out, then the cholesterol molecule remains in the blood. Then that is when issues start. What issue starts, I will show you in the next slide. Look at this heart. God made pump. Non-stopping pump. It starts beating when you are born. It stops beating when you die. Actually, you die because it stops. It is not that after your death this will stop. It stops and then you die. It beats and then you are alive. So, a motor or a pump which is which is pumping blood you can look at this this is shown in blue color this is shown in red color they are purposefully shown that way otherwise they are not of that color you can see the two valves here there is two valves here and you can see two more other things here you can see a atrium ventricle right side and left side now this red colored portion is where blood comes from the lungs and goes into the body. You can see this right side. Blood comes from the lungs. Oxygenated blood will come from the lungs and it will go into the body. You can see this wall is a one directional wall. And the blood which goes into the organs, it comes back here. It comes back through the into the right atrium. And this is shown in blue color because now this is the deoxygenated blood which is carrying toxins now. Now this has to again go back to lungs. So it will come here. Then again you can see this wall. Through this wall it will go back to the lungs. This is also a one directional wall. God made or God designed such a beautiful organ which is working with its own walls. The, all these walls are not metallic. They are all made of flesh, muscle. And this heart is pumping blood, pumping blood non-stop. Okay. Now what happens if there is cholesterol in the blood? If there is an unburnt cholesterol in the blood, what happens? That cholesterol comes here and the cholesterol is accumulated here. And the cholesterol comes here, the cholesterol is accumulated here. Maybe the cholesterol may be accumulated with these walls. Or later on the cholesterol may be accumulated even in the arteries anywhere. All these arteries, here the artery is having enough diameter. Later on there will be branches of these blood vessels where the diameter of the blood vessels or the blood veins will narrow down. And if it narrows down, this heart is pumping blood whole day. And if there is an undigested food or undigested unburnt cholesterol, material or any such other material, they will get stuck in this pipe. Okay. People should seriously think about how heart works. This beats 1,3680 beats per day in a normal human being. If you are under stress or tension, still more. Otherwise, it is 1,3680 beats per day. If you keep practicing yoga abhyasa and pranayama, gradually heart will be stronger because in some of the pranayama exercises for the heart, rest is also important. But I will not tell all that here. Here the subject is only to discuss about food and uh, health. So this heart is beating 1,3680 beats per day, which means 3 crore 78 lakhs 43,200 beats per year. Has any human being made such a pump which will work non-stop this way and it will sustain this way? Because this is a God-made pump, it has survived on its own. Because it's a pump made out of muscles. Pump controlled through nerves. You should thank God at this moment right now that your heart is right now working. Okay. I hope my audience have become 
at least sensible by now today is the 11th session and i hope all my audience have understood the way in which i discuss these things and i hope all of you are sensible to whatever i say otherwise i had some objections earlier so if this heart is beating 3 crore 78 lakhs 43200 beats per year multiply it by the number of years which you live and find out how it has been beating now it is our responsibility to take care of our heart it is our responsibility to be consuming healthy food maximum possible natural food the food which will contain less cholesterol even if it contains cholesterol that cholesterol must be easily digestible and the cholesterol should not remain residual the cholesterol should be worked out or burnt out we require healthy cholesterol also later on i'm going to tell about that there are about 40 billion microscopic capillaries in the human body if all the blood vessels are stretched out they would be about 60000 miles long that is enough to go around the world twice yatha brahmande tatha pindande as is the macrocosm so is the microcosm the macrocosm is infinite even the microcosm is also infinite if all the blood vessels are stretched out which is there in the human body it will be around 60000 miles long that is enough to go around the world twice we have so many such microscopic capillary veins in our body just think about the population on this uh, earth and think about the number of neurons in this brain earth has got some 7 billion people right now but the brain has got some trillions which means a small head inside a small brain it is containing the number of neurons which is much larger than the number of human population on this earth you should wonder now about god's creation uh, my students will be appreciating me because we discuss a lot of vlsi concepts very large scale integration concepts and we discuss about the integrated circuits in the integrated circuits we will have up to 12 metallic layers and we will have polysilicon layer we will have diffusion layer now all these metallic layers are power supply lines ground lines clock lines along with that all other input and output signal lines now it is a small microchip even your sim card the sim card contains a very small microchip hardly 4 mm by 8 mm microchip it's a semiconductor chip or silicon chip that chip contains nearly 12 metal layers out of those metal layers as i mentioned all the metal lines are stretched out it will run into some 4 kilometers to 6 kilometers you may wonder now such a 4 mm by 8 mm chip will contain 4 kilometer to 8 kilometer metal lines yeah because it is like a coiled spring where multiple layers are connected it's a minuscule wiring which is happening inside uh, a semiconductor chip so the integrated circuit technology and the human body's technology they are parallels god also made minuscule veins in the body now human being is simply replicating whatever god has made as i already told you whatever go, uh, human beings have developed on this earth in the name of technology they have simply replicated the technology which god has made nothing else this is about the heart keep on looking at it wonderful yeah sharat told it is 72 beats per minute yes i told average no it is 72 beats per minute technically it is correct keep on looking at this heart 
I will tell you a small story now. Today my story came a little earlier because it is slightly a bigger story. Okay, there was a king called Bhartrahari. And this Bhartrahari was a king also. He was a poet also. He was a very warm-hearted person. Very kind king to his own citizens. And uh, he had a beautiful wife. Only one wife. Generally kings will have many queens. Whereas this king was a noble king. He had only one wife, one queen. And he was appreciating his wife or his queen heavily. He was heavily in love with her. One day, uh, he started composing poems on love. Because he was loving his own wife, he kept on composing more and more of poems. All on romance and love. And uh, he composed totally about 100 poems. When he composed all these 100 poems, he named the book as Shringara Shatakam. Shringara means romance, Shatakam means 100. It was a collection of 100 poems. He named it as Shringara Shatakam. And this book he simply released. And many of the youth started reading this book. And all these romantic youth, they got inspired by his book. After a few years, he thought, am I giving a wrong message to my citizens? Because I have written a book which is on love and romance. My citizens should not mistake this with something else. Because what is the difference between love and lust? Many times, lust is confused with love. Prema, matte kama. Yaudu prema, yaudu kama. Many times lust is confused with love. When somebody is in love with somebody, they will sing a song, O Mehabuba, O Mehabuba, they sing that song. If at all the same love is crashed out, if the lover leaves, then they sing a song, Mera dil gaya. This way. So, they have confused themselves with this particular love affair. So, Bhartrahari thought, whatever was my intention in writing the book and in whatever way my citizens take it, if it is going something wrong, I may be giving a wrong message to my own citizens. So, Bhartrahari started writing one more book on ethics and morality. If in lust, if there is ethics, if in lust, if there is morality, then the life is sustainable. Otherwise, in the name of lust, people will start doing crimes. So, he being a sensible king, he thought, life requires ethics and morality also, character also, not only love and lust. Only by romance and love, life will not sustain. Love must be backed up by morality and ethics and character. So he started composing such poems and that was called as Neeti Shatakam. He composed another hundred poems and he compiled that book as Neeti Shatakam. But this book did not become as popular as the first book, which is very common. It is a general psychology that very quality movies. In Kannada, we have a great film director called Girish Kasarwadi. Each and every movie he makes is a legend. It's a treasure. But Kannadikas don't know about it. Majority movies allow Kocho Machu. Gundo Tundu. Majority of the movies. One hero, one heroine, one villain, some fight, some song. This is a general masala formula. So naturally, the first book became very popular. His second book did not become as popular as the first one. But the second book was read by the scholarly people, the wise people. In general also, the films made by Girish Kasarwalli, people like me watch a lot. People like me appreciate a lot. But the general mass will not uh, watch those movies. One great movie Naga Varna made, Allama. Very classic movie, great movie. The movie is about Allama Prabhu. Great movie. 
But Allama, how many Kannadikas have watched it? That way, there is a difference uh, as per the Gaussian distribution curve or the standard distribution curve. If you have a sigma plus 1 minus 1, generally at the top, the curve is narrow. Means at the top, the percentage is less. In general, in philosophy, people say that it is lonely at the top. Always at the top, it is lonely because hardly, hardly only less people only climb till the top. Remaining mass is at the bottom only. That way, his uh, romantic book became very popular. The second book, Niti Shatakam, did not become very popular. Anyway, the king thought, anyhow, whatever I wanted to write, I have written. It is up to the people to accept it now. King had a satisfaction that he covered up the mistake which he did in the first book. After a few years, one day, one saint came to the king's court. When the saint came, he had a sack around and uh, the saint told to the king that, my dear king, I am inspired by your second book, Niti Shatakam, where you have spoken about the importance of character. I am pleased with that particular book and I wanted to give you a gift. I have brought a gift for you. And that saint put his hand into the sack and took out an apple. And that apple he offered to the king. Now, Bartrahari asked, what is the specialty of this apple? Now, the saint said, I have charged this fruit with my powers of my penance. Nanna tapashakti in the nani hannige pranamanna pradana madiddhene. I have blessed this fruit with my spiritual powers. So, whoever consumes this particular fruit, they will remain very healthy, very strong. Okay. So, Bartrahari accepted it. Bartrahari had a prostration to the saint and the saint went away. Now, Bartrahari took this fruit to his palace and he thought, I have my dear wife and I love my wife. So, should I consume this fruit or should I give it to my wife? Or should we eat 50-50? We should not eat 50-50. We should not share it because saint has charged it fully. So, it should not be 50-50 again. So, as I am loving my wife, love also means sacrifice. Prema yellidiyo alithyagavuide. So, Bartharari thought, let me give this fruit to my queen only. Let me ask her to consume it. He went to the palace. He gave this apple fruit to his queen and he told her about all this incident and he told her, you consume the fruit. Queen agreed and queen took it. Later on, Bartrari thought that queen would have consumed the apple. After about a week, the dancer of the court came to the king's court, Bartrari's court. That lady dancer told to the king that, my dear king, I have a precious gift for you. And Bartrari said, what is that gift? Now, that dancer took out one apple and she told, I want to offer this apple to you. Whoever consumes this apple, they will live very healthy. Now, Bartrari asked, from where did you get this apple? Now the dancer told, my dear king, you don't worry about from where did I get this apple, but this apple is a very special apple. It has been charged by the spiritual powers of a saint. Okay. Bartrari immediately came to know this is the same apple which a week before saint had offered to him. Bartrari became suspicious and he asked that uh, lady, the dancer, that you tell me from where did you get this apple, otherwise I am going to execute you. He threatened her. Out of fear, the dancer told, this apple was given to me by the commander-in-chief of the army. Now the king called commander-in-chief of the army and the king asked the commander-in-chief, you tell me who gave you this apple and he threatened the commander-in-chief also that he will get him executed. Then the commander-in-chief told that the queen gave him this apple. <laughs> queen gave him this apple. 
king gave the apple to the queen queen gave the apple to the commander in chief commander in chief gave the apple to the dancer dancer is coming back to give the apple to the king it is not love triangle it is love quadrangle <laughs> in general we see movies of love triangle this is a peculiar story of love quadrangle and this is a true story whatever i am telling you is true it has happened in 15th century now bartrari thought what a fool i was i was loving my wife and i was thinking that my wife will love me back it was not so my wife was loving the commander in chief and my wife may be thinking that she is loving commander in chief so commander in chief also will love the wife back that was not so commander in chief was loving the dancer and the commander in chief may be thinking that the dancer is loving him back it is not so the dancer is loving the king what type of stupid life is this where four people are living in foolishness assuming that someone else is loving us and bartrari became highly dejected he thought that the way in which we have affection towards people we don't get it back with my own wife i did not get it back that means whole of life internally she is having some other affection with somebody else externally she is only showing that she is my queen there is no point in living this way this king was a very sensible king and his heart was broken not the physical heart you are seeing the heart here which is beating physical heart was not broken his internal heart was broken in sanskrit we say hrut aya hrut aya hrut means center center of yourself that is called hrudaya so he felt dejected he thought i should not stay in this kingdom anymore he simply left the kingdom he took up sanyasa and he started penance alone bartrari became a saint even after becoming a saint he did not keep quiet he started composing poems further he wrote another 100 poems about the impermanence of life dispassionate nature of life whatever you expect you will not get in this life so you should not have too heavy expectations you should not expect a lot from people because most of the people will not be knowing about what is that particular expectation they may not be caring for that also so bartrer wrote another 100 poems called vairagya shatakam now all these three books are available in my senior classes of yoga i have kept these three books as a syllabus we discuss it and we study it we don't study shringara shatakam in detail but we study neeti shatakam and vairagya shatakam in detail very beautiful book totally 300 poems this is my today's story 15th story of bhartrahari and the fruit i am noting it down okay so in the name of love don't get confused don't confuse lust with love and don't expect too much from other people in general i keep on quipping in my classes that in the olden days there used to be 35 40 people 50 60 people in a family working together as agriculturists that was called as a joint family later on only husband wife grandfather grandmother grandchildren about 5 to 10 people that was called as a joint family later on only husband wife with their own kids that was called as a joint family now if husband and wife stay together for one year after marriage without divorcing then that itself is called as joint family <laughs> now we don't know whose heart who is breaking and what is the meaning of love i have seen some cases where it was a love marriage only even love marriage also there used to be human even of quarrels in of breakups even divorces that means they have not understood what actually is love strictly speaking there may not be unconditional love with human beings once one journalist asked jayalalitha when she was alive she was a great film star also in the beginning later on she became a 
politician also when one journalist asked uh, you have you have enough wealth and you are beautiful also why you did not get married then she told i am looking for a person who will love me unconditionally irrespective of my beauty or my wealth but i am unable to find any person who is having unconditional love there may not be this unconditional love on this earth that was a statement given by jayalalita okay that is true also because bartrari understood it long back centuries before so it is a great spiritual quality to develop unconditional love if at all if you and me can develop an unconditional love that will be a great spiritual quality we may not be having it right now but i should appreciate people like swami vivekananda people like adi shankar acharya people like veda vyasa out of their unconditional love only they have written such beautiful scriptures which will work like a guiding lights for the humanity at least in the indian context all these saints and sages only they will develop a unconditional love towards humanity otherwise there is a god's unconditional love i have already spoken much more about the god's bank it is a god's unconditional love that he produces wonderful vegetables and fruits as our food let me go to the next slide again the same picture you have a aortic semilunar valve here pulmonary semilunar valve here tricuspid valve here and bicuspid valve here now i have shown you the picture of cholesterol where cholesterol can get accumulated inside the arteries also they can get accumulated here in the walls also look at this picture there is a plaque build up inside the arteries see you can see this particular artery there is no plaque as such now here there is a small plaque here there is more plaque here there is still more plaque this plaque or plaque it gets accumulated like this only because of the fatty substances that are present in the blood just go through this picture once again see this picture this is the intestinal wall or the artery itself you can visualize this as a blood vein or artery now in this artery when the blood is moving along with the blood cholesterol is moving now the same cholesterol gets accumulated now it is our primary job that we should avoid all heavy fatty substances like cheese paneer and such things once in a while you can have not regularly if at all you consume it you should be burning it you should be digesting it otherwise if it goes there if it goes into the blood in the same fashion it will gradually build up now this plaque will not build up within few months it will take few years sometimes few decades you will not be knowing what harm you will be doing to the body because your food habit is gradually going to affect you in your old age or in the middle age some day when the heart is having such plaque if there is um, blood is not pumping properly then some day the heart will say i am tired i cannot pump the blood any more i have i don't have too much of force then people will say you have a heart attack is it heart attacking you or is it you who attack the heart they simply tell the name heart attack who is attacking whom in the previous so many years you did not become responsible for what you ate that is when you affected your circulatory system none of the birds and animals have this cholesterol congestion and why none of the birds and animals will have a heart attack and why don't they die that way they will die only after certain age because in their food such content is not there this is the major mistake which the modern human beings are doing with the lot of processing of the food packaging of the food just imagine one cube of paneer it should contain how much of fat how much of fat it is extracted from how many liters of milk 
cheese or paneer or whichever. From how many liters of milk they extract all those fat and they make it like a cube or slice and they sell it and you consume it. There is nothing wrong if you consume small amount. I am repeating again, even if you consume a small amount, even I consume mutter paneer and I, I also consume cheesy pizza but I make it ensure that I will digest it in my stomach and I will burn it by my exercise. If that is there, then you can consume. Otherwise, you have to limit your fat intake or paneer or cheese intake. Someday the plaque will build up in the blood because of the excessive cholesterol. What they do then? This is an artery. In the artery, if there is a plaque build up, what they do there? They put this particular metallic wire and the metallic wire will have a expandable spring. Look at this. They insert a metallic wire. Let us say somewhere near your heart, this artery is blocked. Let us say this particular artery is blocked anywhere. What they do is, through the modern technology, now we have ultrasound scanning. Through the ultrasound scanning, the surgeon will keep on watching and they will gradually insert a very thin metallic wire through your thighs. They will insert it to the thighs, gradually they will move it all the way to the heart. And wherever near the heart or wherever that artery is blocked, this is the block there, there this pipe comes. And this pipe will have a spring structure here. Now they will somehow enable the expansion of the spring through the pneumatics. Now when the spring gets expanded, the spring remains there. When the spring remains there, gradually they take out that particular pipe away. All this happens within around one and a half hours, two hours. Okay. Now, the plaque is not removed at all. They will not be able to remove the plaque at all as such. It is visible through the ultrasound scanning. But it may not be so easy to remove it. Why? It has become like a cement there. Now, it has become like a cement there. It, is, it may not be possible to remove it. So the best thing is to expand the artery here and expand the artery, the spring remains there. This they call it as stent. Now when the stent remains there, for that particular stent also you will be paying, for the surgery also you will be paying heavily. Why you are paying heavily? Because you ate cholesterol heavily. You did not burn, you did not work out. And the spring will remain there. Once the spring remains there, now the surgeon will advise to the patient not to bend much, not to breathe heavily. You should not bend much, you should not breathe heavily. If at all you bend much or you breathe heavily, if at all the spring gets dislocated, that is again a problem. Do you want such things inside a God given body? Do you want such things? When God made a beautiful heart, when God made such a beautiful heart, do you want such items to be inserted by some other expert and it will remain there? My dear friends, take care of your body completely. You are Arjuna. Krishna has given you this. Krishna is the owner of this. You are only a tenant. You should think like a well-educated, well-sensible human being. I have been educating you since so many sessions here now. I hope you are well-educated about your own body. At least now you are convinced that God only designed this body, God only manufactured this body and it is your responsibility to take care of the health. Now, this process is called as angioplasty. Collapsed balloon catheter and stent. Dilated balloon catheter and stent. Stent is deployed now. Stent is deployed and the catheter is taken out. This process is called as angioplasty. And uh, it is heavily praised nowadays that this is one of the highly successful and easy surgeries. Okay, yeah, for the technical people, 
it is like that but what about you who built up the plaque let us see how to conquer this cholesterol now ldl low density lipoprotein this cholesterol which builds up there wait a minute don't keep on asking me questions now question is how to control cholesterol if liver itself is producing it more liver is going to produce hdl that's why i told wait a minute don't keep asking questions i am discussing about ldl breakers some fat is which is required for the body liver is going to produce healthy cholesterol liver is not going to produce harmful cholesterol paneer cheese burger cheese slices meat they are all cholesterol oil even the cooking oil even in the cooking oil there is enough cholesterol if you do not burn it the cholesterol molecule remains in the blood as such liver is not producing the cholesterol which is already present in cooking oil that is where uh, coconut oil is the best cooking oil you can compare statistically about the people who are staying in the coastal area of the uh, india and people who are living in the plateau region the people who are in the coastal region they use maximum amount of coconut oil for their cooking and actually they don't use much of oil there they use oil only for seasoning whereas in the deccan plateau region which I, where i am observing people regularly use a lot of oil in their cooking and that oil is also groundnut oil or sunflower oil coconut oil's fat content is lesser than the groundnut oil's fat content i had told last time that uh, we take oil from the seeds and the residue of the seeds we give it as fodder to the cow and we consume the oil who is healthy now the cow is healthy now because cow is having a oilless nutrition we are having a uh, condensed oil as cholesterol so oil items fat items you should reduce if at all there are fat items milk is also fat but that fat is required to some extent as i have already told you about the questioning of the uh, muscles even fat is required but liver is not producing again don't blame liver for that <laughs> liver is uh, designed by god not oil oil we take out from the seeds seeds were primary element for consuming to birds and we are doing it we are consuming it that is where we have gone far away from the divine kingdom we have established our own human kingdom okay ldl breakers ldl means low density lipoprotein this low density lipoprotein is actually causing a plaque there so how to break that already answers are there if you keep on consuming lemon juice garlic onion ginger turmeric cloves cardamom cinnamon dry chilies curry leaves mustard seeds cabbage apple coriander guggul there is one ayurvedic uh, medicine this is called guggul it's a resin from a tree but they have found that this guggul can break ldl centuries before they have found out in ayurveda there is a great tablet called yogaraja guggula yogaraja guggula their yoga means combination of so many things a king of combinations along with the guggula that is called yogaraja guggula one of the famous ayurvedic medicines so all these items you already have in your cooking right if you already have in your cooking then you are safe because these items also go into the blood stream and they are going to break this ldl they are not going to allow the uh, formation of plaque now there are hdl sources hdl is required what is hdl high density lipoprotein now look at this heart itself look at this heart itself is heart not a fat heart is also a muscle muscle is also a fat what about your own skin skin is a layer of fat only to some extent what about your own cheeks what about your lips each and every flesh and muscle is also a fatty substance only so it is required that even fat is required by the body for 
maintaining the structure even for the health of the heart also if the heart has to heal itself heart has to reconstruct its own muscles for that muscle also fat is required but that fat is hdl that is called high density lipoprotein so you require hdl you don't require ldl ldl can be broken out by means of these items but hdl sources are almonds walnut millets barley oats carrot beetroot coconut oil olive oil honey buttermilk flax seeds peanut cashew nut avocado all types of beans and moong dal if you include all these things in your diet already i have told you enough about all these things if you include all these things i have mentioned coconut oil olive oil somebody mentioned last time that in my slides coconut is missing later on i checked out in so many places i have discussed about coconut only the coconut's picture i have not put so coconut oil olive oil generally westerners they use more of olive oil because they have understood that olive oil is having zero ldl they say it is totally cholesterol free why do they say it has no ldl but it has hdl they simply say cholesterol free they have at least woken up now because they only suffered a lot who made this practice of condensed fats or condensed cheeses or paneers who did in general punjab is used to consume lot of uh, paneer but punjab is also consume lot of onion any north indian meal they definitely will give you lemon and onion now ask me why they definitely give lemon pieces and onion pieces on the table purposefully they keep and then they give you butter kulcha butter paneer all that they give you because they know that all that fat is going to be broken up by onion and lemon that is the secret of the punjabi meal but the westerners did not understand all this wisdom i have been telling you respect the traditional wisdom respect the traditional food punjabis can eat that much they can work out that much i should i i feel sad to say that there have been lot of sardar ji jokes people have been making mockery or fun of sardar ji but i came to know a fact that sardar ji will never beg for their life you can find beggars of any other faith system you will not find a sardar ji begging this i found out much later on so the sardar ji they will work hard for their livelihood and all the truck drivers there are so many sardar ji who keep on driving trucks throughout indian state and they all consume all the, in the all dhabas they consume rotis and then lemon and onion also okay sardar ji some day in my sacred secret slides i have discussion about the sikh faith there i'll speak more about guru gobind singh and guru nanak not now okay now the westerners they went far away from the divine world they developed their own method of food and they started consuming lot of fat then they woke up at least now because if this beautiful heart is affected if this beautiful fast is affected how much pain they will undergo that is when they stopped consuming all those oily products they have gone for olive oil but indians in the coastal side i have been telling you who ever invented that red boiled rice is a genius similarly they understood that coconut oil is very safe for the human body i have told you in my earlier class itself how to identify a food item as a healthy item or a unhealthy item you have to go through that previous slide so if you taste a coconut piece in your mouth you will feel pleasant which means it is meant for you if you put a sunflower seed in your uh, into your body you may not feel as pleasant as when you tasted a coconut which means what which means it is common sense so coconut oil is very safe compared to other oils if you are not habituated in using coconut oil reduce the intake of the other oils as much as possible fried foods oily foods avoid it perform ekadashi vrata even though i am against fasting i have already told in the beginning yoga and fasting are not related in yoga we don't actually say 
you have to fast for one day because hunger cannot be ignored that way but people who are fatty people who are already overweight obese at least they should perform ekadashi vrata ekadashi monthly twice this ekadashi comes they made a vrata long back people who do not practice yoga they have to practice ekadashi vrata people who practice yoga they need not practice ekadashi vrata so ekadashi vrata on that particular day you have to starve normally but don't remain completely starved because don't satiate you have to satiate the hunger stay on water or tender coconut or buttermilk or fresh fruit juices without sugar don't drink milk on that particular day because milk is again fat my advice is 30 minutes per day religiously physical exercise either yoga asana or aerobics or any such physical exercise if you are not in that then you have to practice ekadashi vrata when you are sick drink enough warm water and fluids don't consume solid foods when you are sick i have already told you body will prioritize when you are sick you will not have enough digestive strength so when you don't have enough digestive strength you should not consume whatever is cooked at home okay don't consume solid foods that is when again i appreciate the ayurvedic doctors where they say about pathya and apathya they say what to consume and what not to consume allopathic people are yet to understand about all these things sometimes some allopathic doctors will say consume whatever you want to consume along with that you consume this medicines also that is what in general they say but ayurveda medicine and the food are totally related when some ayurvedic doctor gives you ayurvedic medicine he will also tell you not to eat some of the items and to keep on eating some of the items that is where pathya and apathya comes into picture so when you are sick don't consume solid foods observe the body and understand the signals when it is giving aches when it is giving nausea cough cold diarrhea irritation lack of taste appetite these are all the signals which the body gives these are not diseases don't mistake headache as a disease don't mistake vomiting as a disease don't mistake cough and cold as a disease don't mistake even a diarrhea as a disease they are not diseases they are the signals which the body is giving you when you have a pain it means that body is telling you i am telling you take rest body is telling you i am indicating pain if you don't have a pain then you have to bother if you have a pain you need not bother but the pop people's problem is that whenever they have a pain they will think that there is something wrong yeah there is something wrong it is a signal let us say there is something seriously wrong if there is no pain let us say one injection is given there as a pain killer or a tablet is taken as a pain killer and if there is no pain but there is a serious damage happening in the body what do you talk about it that is why the stupid fuel called aravinda was telling that pain killers are brain killers pain killers are going to reduce the activity of the nervous system itself problem will still be there you will not be feeling that problem just like a drunk kid let us say a drunk kid drinks a lot of alcohol he falls on the street on the footpath he will lie down there till morning there is serious damage happening for his liver and his stomach and his intestines he is not aware of it does it mean that everything is uh, uh, all right no when there is no pain there may be bigger danger there because the alcohol became a top most toxic substance in the body and the body stopped all other activities it has to simply remove the alcohol through the kidney it has to send it out that is what the body is doing now he will be happily lying down on the street till the morning but it is a serious case of the body so there is no pain there but it is a serious case same way if there is a pain don't declare it as a disease later on it may become painless disease so if you have a headache what it means either you have read books heavily or you have watched youtube heavily or you have looked at your mobile heavily you have got into whatsapp university and you have got into google university you kept on touching your ipad or iphone or your mobile phone or whatever and you kept on looking at it even at night sometimes i see people they take mobile into their rug also don't keep your mobile phone near your body when you go to sleep because the mobile phone is going to emit radiation towards of rf 2.4 gigahertz 
It's a very bad habit for the people to take the mobile phone to the bed and keep it below the pillow. If you keep it below the pillow, whole night it will keep on radiating harmful radiation of 2.4 gigahertz RF. This is the stupidity of the modern people. So you should keep your mobile phone at least 2 feet, 3 feet away from you. You can take it to your bedroom. Don't keep it below the head, no, pillow. Keep it 3 feet away. And don't keep on watching your mobile phone continuously. Eyes will strain. When the eyes will strain, the head will have pain. And the body is telling you, give me rest. Give me rest. It's enough. Now for the headache, you take a painkiller. Is the problem solved? For a headache, if you take a painkiller, your nervous system's activity is reduced. But the deficiency which will be there in your eyes, that will remain there. Healing will not happen. So painkiller is not a solution for a headache. Or painkiller is not a solution for any pain as such. You should first understand why body is showing you the pain. Your body is much more intelligent than you. It is telling you without any language. Its language is this one only. X. If you have a headache, if you have a body ache, your body is telling you take rest. That is the first priority, topmost priority. Otherwise, regularly keep on practicing yoga bhyasa. Again, I keep on telling the same thing. Mine is same DVD playing. If you keep on practicing yoga bhyasa pranayama, if you have enough oxygen inside you, body will have ojas, then tejas, then prana. Then you will have less pain. That is X. Nausea. Nausea is vomiting sensation. Means what? There is something toxic inside the stomach and body is telling you, I am unable to digest it. I want to vomit it out. If it is giving the signal, better go to the bathroom and you vomit it out. That is better because something toxic went inside. It should not go to the intestine also. It should not go to the bloodstream also. That is the signal which the body is giving you. But sometimes what happens is if somebody is having a vomiting sensation, somebody else will give some other medicine to stop that vomiting. Height of stupidity. If a pregnant lady is having a nausea, what does it mean? In general, within three months, pregnant ladies will have a lot of vomiting sensation. What does it mean? Inside the uterus, there is a heavy manufacturing activity happening where the brain of the child is being formed. When the brain of the child is being formed, the lady should not eat much to sustain herself. If the lady eats a lot of things, then energy will be wasted for the digestion of the food which lady has consumed and the other process will be affected. The construction of the brain inside the uterus will be affected because there are also a lot of energy is required. That is when the body tells the pregnant lady, eat less, eat less, I am, I am causing you vomiting. Is it not God's signal? It is God's signal, it is body's signal. This has to be understood by the sensible human beings. Cough and cold when it is happening, it indicates that there is a throat infection and there is a phlegm formed. There is a battle going on in between white blood cells of the germs. Cough and cold is not a disease. In my next presentation, I am going to talk more about the health of throat. Not now. Diarrhea again is not a disease. Just like vomiting is cleansing of the stomach, diarrhea is the cleansing of the intestine. Which means that there is something toxic in the intestine and body is simply ejecting it out without absorbing it. So, diarrhea is not a disease. That is why in Ayurveda, Vamana Virechana Bastinastya Rakta Mokshana. Vamana is vomiting. Virechana is diarrhea. That is a therapy in Ayurveda. If a diarrhea is there, you should allow it to happen. It should cleanse itself completely. Then you should take rest. If irritation is happening in the body, if there is lack of taste and appetite, which means that body is unable to digest, body is telling you don't eat anything now. In all these cases, Drink enough warm water, drink enough fluids. Don't consume solid foods because body is unable to digest. Observe the body and understand the signals. If at all you require medicines, consume herbal medicines. Herbal medicines will have side benefit. They will not have side effect. And then rest, rest, rest. All other things can happen later. If you lose money, you can gain money again. If you lose name, you can gain name again. 
If you lose anything, you can gain it again anything. If you lose your health, it is very difficult to gain it once again. For me personally, my health is my topmost priority compared to anything else. With this slide, I will stop for today. If people have any questions, you can ask me now. Otherwise, I will wind up. Tomorrow, I will be concluding this session. Let me see how many participants are there. Around 36 are there. Tomorrow, I will be concluding these sessions. Uh, tomorrow, I will be discussing uh, one great rejuvenating Rasayana called Chavana Prasha in detail. So, I hope people have no questions. Okay then, I am ending the meeting for today. Again, we will see you tomorrow evening. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.